Hi there, I'm Nancy Naomi Carlson, and I wish I could be there in person with you at the Gaithersburg Book Festival, but they're bringing me live to you, or kind of live, um, into your living room, your study, with my poetry. And they gave me a, a reason to wash my hair, put on a little makeup, get dressed. So I'm delighted to be here. I'm going to start with a poem I just recently wrote. Um, we're all in, in a shared experience here with our shelter in place. And you'll, you'll tell by the title of the poem at what point of the quarantine this was written. And it starts with um, an epigraph by Albert Camus from the book he wrote, The Plague or La Peste in French. Quarantine, day 40. We find it hard to believe in plagues that crash down on our heads from a blue sky. Albert Camus, The Plague. When the winds began to move through the elms like a giant communal sigh, I mistook the sound for rain, the kind that washes clean any contagion on doorknobs and decks or the flagstones lining the garden path. But in the floodlight's reach, just ruffle and flux of branches and leaves and trunks veering away from plum. A diversion from forty days of wandering, room to deserted room, in a scene from La Peste. Quote, Rats died in the street. People died in their homes. The newspaper's chief concern was the street. End quote. Then lightning laced the sky, unleashing a salvo of pea-sized hail. By morning, the robin's sing-song patter had resumed, despite dead tree limbs strewn over grass, some still upright like stakes. One sheared off branch dangled high above my head, like a sword dancer caught in a tangle of tree. Recently, a friend of mine, Tina Dow, asked for a bunch of poets to find and read poems about jazz and poetry for a fundraiser for uh, WPFW. And I looked, I have tons of music related poems. I used to be a musician, played piano, played a, a poor violin and flute. Um, not a lot of jazz, but I found this one jazz poem and I'm going to read that. It's also got a French Epigraph, this time by Charles Baudelaire. Baudelaire's Pillared Temple. Perfumes, hues, and sounds echo one another. Charles Baudelaire. Nature as Pillared Temple. I'll go along, even accept that columns speak, though the words are mumbled, muted. Yes, to perfumes mellow as oboes, maybe malachite blue? Or perfumes depraved as horns, yellow as tamarind wood? Crimson for Sousa's brass and shine, and for Bessie Smith, scales ascending violet to red, the chromatic half-tones, yellow-orange, chartreuse. Consider a red brick church in New Orleans that barely stands, flood line ten feet high. A boy with a cello cracked at the bridge stares at heat rising to stained glass bordered shut. If I paint this scene in oils, viscous as pitch, can I measure the cost of a blink? And the other poem that I read, musical poem, um, inspired by Passover. It seems every Passover comes and I write a poem or write something. Uh, something about the whole story, it, it just intrigues me. And this year was no exception, except I ended up writing an essay on Passover, but not really on Passover. You know, with essays, it's not really about what it's about. It's about something else. So 
This one was written uh, many Passovers ago. Miriam at the Waterside. At first, a leaf the water catches like the wind. Blue Nile, White Nile, and overhead flocks of thrush. A raft of twigs and leaves bound tight by weeds, unbound again by soft and lazy ripples, smaller than a newborn's hands. In the rush of wings, a shudder weaves the sky. Basket of reeds, nest of grass, blanket blue as Egypt, infant lulled by flow and lilt of current, bulrush, pearl. Miriam's song, weave the waters, weave the reeds, from darkness will come light, until drifting out of range. A sea of reeds, a timbrel in hand, and tallet fingers fringe the skirts and robes, eddying around bare ankles. Sing a new song, sing a song composed of salt and waves, whatever fits an open mouth, an open palm. Miriam sings the water into stream, the stream to river, the river to sea, song and sea rising after heavy rain, how they hold what must be held until they overflow, how sorrow holds its joy and holds it once again. Sing manna, sing mayim, sing Miriam. No clepsydra measuring the wilderness. Sing waterfowl, water meal foil, water bucks, waters, petals above and below the lily stems fed on what resides unseen below. I am the shaft of light that minds your eyes. I am the line between waking and sleep. I am the line unthreaded in its thinning pulse that pulls you from your dreams. The next one was um, inspired because I was a guest poet at um, Catherine Smith's class at Montgomery College in Germantown. And one of the students said to me, okay, after I read an Adam and Eve poem, would you have bitten into the apple? And I thought, well, I don't know if I would have bitten into the apple. And so then I went home and wrote a poem about it. Fabled fruit. Who could fault Eve's right to know? Her sin-filled heart exposed, grounded day after day by the same sweet earth? How to resist a flawless skin so impurely pure? No Snow White would I still have reached for the crimson side, my reflection cast raw in its shine, Forsake my faith for a taste of what I didn't own. Maybe a lick. Or would I have spit out the first breached mouthful, wiping the juice from my lips with a guilty hand? Some say figs were Eve's downfall, phallic and hidden beneath luxurious leaves. Or maybe pomegranates, thick with caverns of seeds. But... I'll stick with the fruit that led to the Trojan War, the apple of gold, symbol of greed, thrown to the fairest to seed discord. In the end, used to having my way, I'd have Adam take the first bite, just as Lot let his wife look back first. I guess the Garden of Eden was the ultimate first lockdown. And um, as I think about now the, the lockdowns, COVID's probably the hardest on, on people who are living alone. And this Villanelle was written before COVID, but gets at that living alone difficulty, even without COVID. Ask anyone. Ask anyone who's ever lived alone how houses seem to shift when winter comes. It's hard to settle in against the cold. Minor sounds grow amplified, groans from sinking eaves, surfaces that rub. Anyone who's lived alone knows the shape silence takes, 
framed by closing doors and intermittent furnace hum. It's hard to settle in. Against the cold bedroom window, nightly rhythms unfold. A loose screen flaps outside, a broken shutter, and anyone who's ever lived alone knows anything can hide in the quiet approach. A brush of wings or snowdrifts piling up. It's hard to settle in against the cold and empty sheets, the pillow that holds the wild scent of an abandoned love. Ask anyone who's ever lived alone. It's hard to settle in against the cold. So these poems are coming from An Infusion of Violets, um, my latest book, uh, the book I I'm celebrating at the Gaithersburg Book Festival. It is, um, it looks like this. And you'll see on the cover, the, it's published by Seagull Books and the wonderful people at Seagull. Naveen Kishore is the publisher in chief and Shunandini Banerjee is the graphic artist and editor. And she designed this cover, which to me is brilliant. The, the violets, these flowers, but notice how they're, they're bleeding onto this hand. So it's a bruised hand and covered with violets. And the book didn't, it, the book took 20 years to write because I didn't have everything in place to, to describe in it. And it, there was nothing uniform, something to, to bring it all together. And then I got cancer, and that seemed to be the unifying theme. It's not a book about cancer, per se. It's a book about the things the body infuses and things that come through the body and leave the body. The simplest, like you infuse tea, um, you drink tea, or your body infuses love, and love comes in and sometimes goes out. And then, of course, the infusion of infusions from chemotherapy. So that finally became the the overriding idea linking the poems together. And in my day job, I'm a counselor, so we we don't we talk about the cancer experience. We don't talk about what we really like to say about what the cancer was. Um, and by keeping it as the cancer experience, we're able I guess the brain is able to reframe these thoughts. Um, just like I try to tell myself, this is the, the COVID experience and not exactly what I'm really thinking about it. Um, so this book finally came into, an existen into existence 20 years from the time I started it. And um, with chemo and radiation, this poem is about radiation, which came after the chemo. And there were 19 days of it, just about every day, except for weekends. And um, uh, it had to be the left side, which is close to the heart. And uh, one of my good friends suggested prone position where you just kind of lay out straight. And the x-rays come and they go to the right place and they miss the wrong places. And my last day of radiation was December 24th. So it was December 1st and then lasted till December 14th, December 24th. And this is called Day 19. X-rays run me through, angled past my baldness, my breath with a skim of light across my skin. And feeling nothing and seeing less, I invent the plight of ions. Phantom particles blasting black holes in my culpable left breast. The machine clucks and whirs, blends with white dreaming Christmas piped into this wintry scene. A sigh could shred my heart. More rad zipping by than a summer of black monazite sand, dividing all of Brazil into fractions of grays for 19 days in a row. Each layer of skin reddens and weeps. Bare-breasted, tattooed, and scarred, I ride electromagnetic waves that see through me. Calendula 
can't save my body from rubbing against itself. Well, the one good thing about these poems, the cancer poems, is that for four of them, I didn't have to worry about a title. That, as a poet, that's one of the hardest things, a title and the first line and the last line and then what goes in between. But I had myself four good titles, Infusion, round one. Infusion, round two. This is Infusion, round three. Another villanelle. When there's stuff that I don't want to think about or say, I write a villanelle because it gets it said and then gets said over and over and over, which is kind of what you're doing when you're not saying it, you're really thinking it over and over. Infusion round three. A coded language emerged from a morpheme sea. Hyperplasia, exemestane, nuclear grade. Charm times are not evoked in threes. Three weeks between infusions, reprised in frayed dreams of the needle's wake. A broken language emerges. A lymph sea reels with vertigo. Red blood cells retreat. I am bald and moon-faced. Where's the harm in threes? Cytoxin whispers, corroding nails as it seethes drip by drip in recalcitrant veins. A muted language merges with closed seas of blood so pale a slight shift of disease could set off a swell so untamed that evoking three times three times three charms may not be enough to save me. My body knows how it will end but remains with or without charm times evoked in threes, a veiled language merging with closed seas. And I'm going to finish with another Passover poem, a little more upbeat. And it too has an epigraph from the Reconstructionist Passover Haggadah. And it's uh, a sonnet. Prophetess, we now drink from Miriam's cup, the waters of Miriam's well in the wilderness. Drink from this cup as if mine, and though not wine, be drunk with dance and music, the many shapes happiness assumes. Timbrel, wind, reed. Let me well within you as you await desert blooms, or lie down in me as in a sea, and I will cleanse what is not whole, will hold what I cannot heal. I am no Elijah's cup filled with what you cannot touch. I will be yours, the lip where rock meets spring. Thank you so much for listening to these poems, and I hope you'll check on all the other authors who will be here and reading. Thank you. <laughs>